Welcome to Our Social Impact. This is Dirk Van Velzen, and I'm Executive Director of the Prison Scholar Fund, where we have a mission of providing education and employment assistance to help incarcerated people succeed and thrive in society while avoiding homelessness and the revolving door of incarceration. Live from Stanford, Sunday morning, we've got a volleyball game in the background. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we just had to get a truck to back up, so I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, women's volleyball was playing last night, so... Two-time national champion. That, that's why the volleyball vibe is very strong here. Culture is huge. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Stands pure. Gotta pure the sand. sun, volleyball, <laughs> Stanford. Palm trees. So, so we're jumping right into it with uh, Jody Anderson. Okay, here, here we go. Tell me about yourself, and uh, we kind of randomly connected here at Stanford. That's true. So what's, uh, how'd you get here? What's your story? <laughs> 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 how'd you happen to yeah. arrive in paradise, actually, right? I know how I got here, but how'd you Especially get here? given our background. Absolutely, true indeed. So... Two years ago, I'll, I'll just start from that, that vantage point. I was inside of Auburn Correctional Facility, right? And I use that as a baseline. I'm guessing that's a prison. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. And not the university. Yeah. The, the other kind of the like university. Yeah, absolutely. So gladiator school for like the underground, right? In, in New York. In, 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 in New York, right? Not Rikers, but the other. Not Rikers, Rikers but the other kind of uh, camp where people rarely make it out alive with their, with their faculties or, you know. And um, so, so I was in there. And that's contrasted with where I am now as a current undergraduate senior, right, at Stanford studying political science with a concentration in political economy and development. Yeah, so what do you want to do with that? What do I want to do with that? I want to <laughs> study political economy and development. <laughs> right? 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 So I have no idea what one does with that. Right? Like, like the, most undergrads. Absolutely. You study the theory of the theory of the theory. There's no application. <laughs> but I know 2020 is coming up. I'll be thrown into the arena, and they'll see uh, what I'm made of then. But for now, I'm just... probably better than English. Well, I also study Chinese, though, too. So, so hopefully well, that, there'll be a, a nice mixture of that yeah. in there somehow, too. I hear that's a big economy over there. Wow. <laughs> that is what they say. That is what they say. And, e and even here, I, I feel like a good majority of the student body happens to be from China. So I'm fitting right in, if you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the hair. Except for the hair. But Chinese vibes all the way. Right. So how did an upstanding young man like yourself end up in Auburn? Oh, that's I, like. I, I, I know. Well, good question. I am still not sure how it actually happens. It seems to be the natural course of things, considering uh, the traumatic. You can say traumatic. It seems like very normal to me, but the environment that I happen to come from. And that's actually really interesting. Like, the normal environment that you grew up in was normal to you. Right. But maybe for the rest of the world, we, th we look at it differently. <laughs> 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 that That is quite true and awfully disturbing right <laughs> right it, it only takes me actually getting out of that environment and being here all those two worlds are like uh, i guess diametrically opposed right to be able to navigate both of them um is and that's an, a unique talent <laughs> that's, why, that's why it's fascinating <laughs> like it's like i know i got here but how did you yeah, so, so, whenever you meet what someone else yeah, Good. Yeah. A absolutely. So landing in Auburn is probably the turning point, right? If that, that's a proper phrase. I think that would be. That, that like be something it. happened because <laughs> you pivoted, like in entrepreneurial terms, you pivoted, right? I pivoted, absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of entrepreneurship, I only pivoted because uh, my entrepreneurial endeavors had gone uh, off the grid, all right? They, they were leading me uh, to places where my ceiling was capped. Yeah, and actually on your LinkedIn profile, it says entrepreneur, <laughs> but you're also an entrepreneur since you were a kid. Right? This this is very true. So just uh, keeping those entrepreneurial roots alive and very vibrant, right? That's, I can't seem to get away from it, but it's a matter of transitioning from an economy that, that is, you can say, in the dark or underground or right, not legitimate to one that is legitimate, one that you can pass on to your progeny. Not regulated, not, not paying taxes. <laughs> Is that the definition of underground? <laughs> well, Probably that, illegal that, also. That <laughs> seems to be the definition of like above ground too because you, you get to a certain level you don't have to pay taxes That's and you true. can rewrite the re regulations. Yeah, you look at Exxon, <laughs> GM, zero tax pay. Absolutely. Like, how so, do they do that? Right. Well, that, kind of the same skills that yeah. we learned there. You just translate. You know. Hedging, hedging, hedging risk. Hedging <laughs> hedging risk. <laughs> well, so, so speaking of like hedging risk, so that, that that's how I get involved in uh, some rewinding a bit uh, yeah. from Auburn. Cause like, well, Auburn's like strange, right? But how did you even end up in the system getting to Auburn? So my first introduction to the underground economy, which is like a, a sure path to incarceration, right? 
a sure path to kind of like That's a shortened lifespan. That is how you get there, right? That, that, that is a track that so you're you were put just on. walking out of the road, running your own business, <laughs> and you accidentally got scooped up and thrown away. Absolutely I'm not. Sure that, happens, that definitely happens. Not with you. Not with me. Me either. <laughs> not <everybody. laughs> Right. It's kind of like you have like, like by like intention or design, right? You definitely understand what you're getting yourself involved. And after a while, maybe not at first, but after a while, because there's a kind of logic surrounding like, certain environments. No matter how brutal or violent or seemingly chaotic they may be, there is an underlying logic that if you're cerebral, I think we were talking about this earlier, yeah. it kind of makes sense to you. You can make sense of it. And if you feel that your options are limited anyway, and this is your reality, then you engaging in that isn't too far-fetched, especially if you're actively encouraged and recruited, which is leading me back to when I was 10 years old, living in Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn, phenomenal place, <laughs> by the way. I hear they have cheesecake. <laughs> I'm, I'm not selling things. Probably, probably the best cheesecake in the world. I don't think probably. I think they would say it is. Yeah. And, I, and I've had it. i got to say it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Absolutely. Probably, probably take the cheesecake Props over. Brooklyn. The- <laughs> <laughs> Props to Brooklyn. Big shout out to Brooklyn, man. <laughs> so, so I, I lived in Bedford Stuyvesant. And you're slinging cheesecakes? And you're slinging cheesecakes. That's how it started, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they say, well, I started at the Yankees games and I was like selling peanuts, and that's how I got introduced to like, you know, supply and demand. Yeah. Not for us. Yeah. Uh, pure drug trade. And uh, my introduction into the drug trade is very bizarre as well uh, because I was in foster care, right? And we had gotten in foster care because so my, my birth mother lost her mind. Um, Dementia, schizophrenia, what kind of deal? Absolutely. So schizophrenia and being a manic depressive disorder, right? So it's very like high fluent term that, that is hard to disentangle. But I can see the, the effects uh, on her mental health and like her personal psychology has changed. She, actually, she didn't even know I was at Stanford until maybe like a few months ago. Had no idea who I am, what I've become, nothing. It's so, not like she didn't get the memo. She's just <laughs> unplugged. She's just unplugged entirely, yeah. And this happened through dealing with poverty. Because poverty, like, wreaks its havoc on the mind and maybe even the soul to a degree, if, if, if people believe that such a thing exists. It definitely has an effect on uh, the human being. And um, we, we were inside the shelter system in the Bronx. This is after going state to state dodging the rent or getting away from whatever kind of nefarious or, <laughs> or shady like dealings you have to be involved in. Right, right, right. <laughs> this is very normal for us. Well, it's I guess it's normal if you're struggling economically. Right. Like classes and differences. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, this kind of describes the reality of the, the lower classes, right? It's kind of forgotten, right? But still a part of the American like psyche, at least in my opinion. So uh, she loses her mind inside the shelter system. And I think part of it has to deal with uh, the way it was set up. So every day you're in this warehouse, right? And they call your name. If you're lucky to be called, it's like a lottery. If you get called, then you're able to go to a different city and you get to sleep inside of a building that is right? <laughs> not suitable for humans to like live in. But if you have nowhere to go, then it's it's it, suitable. It's better than a tent on the street. Absolutely, which is which is what I happen to see out here in California. So at least in New York, you know, people you'll freeze to death. And if you happen to have children, my mother had four of them. She was under thirty, struggling parent. Um, dad in the picture dad not in the picture so the, the typical story single mom many kids absolutely economically absolutely in a big city um, yeah. right you not cheap to live in not at all <laughs> not at all so uh she loses her mind they put us in foster care no uh, this wasn't the first time we had been in foster care we've been in foster care in new york um, ran into some trouble in texas and virginia just i mean just up and down yeah. right uh, but this is normalized for you. This, 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 this is very normal. It's like our seventh time you being in involved. Chaos. What, what else is new? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, more uh, tumultuous circumstances. I, I, I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can actually thrive in those, right? So uh, <clears throat> we go into a group home at first, and then we eventually get placed inside of this uh, foster home. It's the first time we had all been together inside of the system. So very like celebratory mood, right? We can find like strength in our family ties and bonds, right? So you go through the struggle and then like this is our moment of like peace, right? And tranquility, hopefully. Our mom's kind of gone off the deep end, but at least we all still have each other. Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> Not exactly because m- my foster brother ran the entire block. He was one of the prominent members of, of, of the underground economy, without, without saying too much. And um, <clears throat> because I, my mental faculties are intact, and they were since then, I'd always shown like early signs of uh, academic potential, right? I can basically so count. Can read and write <laughs> I can count. read, write, and count. They're like, how is that possible? Where did you come from? <laughs> so uh, immediately get employed. Immediately get employed at 10 years old. 
So not at the local deli bagging groceries, right? Which is with and no at a ten year old. At a ten year old, yeah. yeah. He can count math, so <laughs> you can he's, count the drugs. Yeah, absolutely. He's hired. Put him in the back of the bins. <laughs> I trust him. He's my uh, he's, he's my foster brother. Yeah, <laughs> he's my, he just landed in my life. This kid could read, write, and think. He's hired. He's in. I live with him. He's okay, <laughs> and I know where he keeps his money. <laughs> right. Yeah, just incredible. Is, so, is, is that like vertical integration? <laughs> 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 Even the practicing the, the, uh, the that kind of like business all, all mindset, concepts, absolutely still it. very evident yeah. early on. Let's, and let's keep distribution in house <laughs> and, and, and back in accounting. Absolutely, which is the reason That's why. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we don't need Arthur Anderson messing this one up. Not at all. All right, so I have excellent stock options, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right. But the, I guess the governing logic is that. If you employ a younger person, the penalties for various like illegal acts or infractions are less. So if you could just get them involved, right? Right, and if they can function at a high level, there's less risk for you. The so reward is high. Yeah, he's hedging organizational right. risk. I, I, absolutely. Right? Right? This guy's maybe like 18, 19 at the time, and still like operating, like ideally you're on his high out level. All these structures, yeah. right? At at an early age, so giving you a kind of competitive advantage amongst your peers is everybody at some point is going to enter into the profession right if they show like any promise right or even if they're like an athlete and you're super talented the people with the money and the resources are going to gravitate towards you. you'll get involved with them anyway because they're going to be the ones feeding you buying you sneakers taking you to the games right they're invested in like your success yeah and you end up running into them anyway it sounds like money's kind of sloshing Four? around yeah, yeah <laughs> Cash economy. Absolutely. Total cash economy. So that, that's my introduction into that uh, underground economy. And uh, when my mother eventually becomes medicated and uh, gets out of the mental institution and the various other programs she was involved in, the state decides that she is healthy enough for us to return to her. Mind you, no housing, no job. So tell me about moms. I don't know. So, so moms, recover, she recovers her health, right? <clears throat> you know, we eventually go back to upstate New York. Mind you, I mean, this is the state is determined, right? After liberating us from a chaotic environment, throwing us right into the heart of Brooklyn, right? <laughs> Which is like beautiful culture. Great music, right? Jay Z. Love the cheesecake. Love the cheesecake, pizza, sports, vibrant culture, right? Um, truly phenomenal place, but just wasn't in the ideal situation. But the state finds another good remedy for our, you know, wayward lives. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> that is to return us back to our mother who has no stable job is on medication right has nowhere to live right and yet somehow this is what do you mean by nowhere to live nowhere to live no apartment no apartment she was living with my with my maternal grandmother who's her mother she's living with her mother who's also mentally deranged right who's on like state assistance and right downtown albany slumville for for, for offspring yeah it's just gonna be her four exactly no it's gonna be her four offspring inside of like a little two-bedroom apartment She's sharing with, like, her own mother. With grandma. With grandma. And this is a state remedy, right? Um, Seems to make sense to me. I, I, what what I, I, could go wrong? Absolutely. What could go wrong? Absolutely everything. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but, but, but in context of what we were just in, like, this is an upgrade. Yeah. This, 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 is, this is somehow an upgrade. So, so you kind of remove from your uh, drug dealing, block running. Abs- absolutely. Stepbrother. But not without proper training. So I'd already gone through this incredible, like, phase of seeing how this world works and then being thrust into it so not being this kind of like objective observer if there is such a thing but actually being involved right in this and th- and thinking through it at, at like a young age maybe not understanding all the dynamics but that de- definitely uh catching on to a few uh a few, a few valuable pieces of information and uh so now i'm in another environment which is like the same but on a smaller scale so there's just more room for like more room for growth. Yes, <laughs> right, so it's a smaller yeah, market. Right. 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 Absolutely. So that's what you happen to see. Oh, this is new territory. Like, right? yeah, yeah, this thing called arbitrage. Yeah, this has worked perfectly here. No, but uh, uh, I digress. Yeah, I digress. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, so we eventually go right back into a shelter system, which is a shelter hotel at this point. So maybe our, we've been to dozens of these like across the United States, but here's another one. We're in there going to school from there. So taking the bus 30 minutes to, to school. I'm still happy to like excel in school uh, because I like a nerd at heart, right? Thanks to my grandfather, so uh, bludgeoned me with. <laughs> did you have re- did you people that read in your family? Did you <laughs> yeah. Reader? yeah. So, so my grandfather, who no one knows anything about, right, from the Caribbean, went into the Navy, allegedly got dishonorably discharged, right? He gets stationed in New Mexico. 
I meet this guy when I'm like two. My mother kind of drops me off to him. And this, he's a brutal academic. Right. Really? So, yeah. So I learned how to. What a juxtaposition from your environment. <laughs> Absolutely. Who would have thought? Right. Yeah. As, as if he knew. Right. This 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 poor child is one day going to transcend his circumstances and make it to Stanford. Right. So may, maybe he did know something. He was preparing me for like what was to come. Yeah. Right. And so I know how to read, write, do math before I was in kindergarten. So as soon as I enter the, the school district, mind you, this is in New Mexico, so um, predominantly Spanish speaking environment. So just knowing English, right, sets you at a competitive advantage. And then having my grandfather, right, kind of like instill values of academia and like higher learning, right, educational attainment early on in my life had set me apart from my peers as well. So immediately going to get like skipped into the second grade, just walking in, right? Okay. He refuses to allow this to happen so I can develop with, with, my, with my peers, right? or, or, or so he had it. Or he must have known you're really not at a competitive advantage because this is a larger world and you're losing, kid. Yeah, <laughs> he, he kind of lost you a lottery of birth. <laughs> he got to step it up a little bit. They said fifth grade, maybe I'll, I'll let them skip you, but second grade is not, not too much of an advancement. And so I remember him making me like read, and if I missed a few words or sp- made me do like spelling like quizzes, if I missed a few letters. I'd stand in the corner for hours. So you had a tiger mom, but a grandma. Absolutely, a grandma but a grandfather, life. absolutely, right? And uh, it, it, it was so bizarre. Say I missed a number of multiplication like, questions back to back, so consecutively. That means like no dinner. Like you sit at the table, and he'll turn my plate upside down, he'll sit across from me, and eat. It's a wow, clear indication, no like, right, so like you have failed, right? Like us, like the family, so like this is what will happen like, when you fail in life. There'll be nothing for you. There'll be nothing for you. Wow. And so this, this is like very clear. Of course, he let me like steal baloney at night. He would yeah. never like monitor the baloney, but that's what you get baloney or spam. You can steal that. But the chicken, macaroni, rice, the stuff I'm eating. That's interesting. You have to excel. Yeah. Yeah. So then, did, you make that, did that make you work harder? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than eating like pennies and like plastic bags, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it definitely pushed me. And I, I think that, that kind of like ethic discipline stuck with me no matter where i found myself i enter a school district or a school in any state and get right in line with the curriculum um so so that that was very advantageous for me early on yeah so that's my early love for like academia but fast forward to being with with my mother uh, and i'm in school so i'm not like failing or anything but of course i'm living in what they call they call us the slums in albany so I'm living in the slums, and that is, right, as the word describes, right, it's so <laughs> facto, the slums. Literally. <laughs> Literally, the sl- slums. Not, like Not like the slums, but it is the slums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you get recruited right away, too. And then, I, like, you, you learn how to fight from getting, like, beat up. So if you lose enough fights, like, you're, you're actually, like, you're a better fighter than most people who just don't get in fights. Yeah. Right? So whenever you're a newcomer. You got to work for the Spartans, Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's proper gladiator yeah. training it's all around the board. And so uh, getting involved in the like the local like gang culture, because you have to choose sides. It's just strange. In elementary school, everything's fine. But as soon as you get into like sixth grade, seventh grade, and you're on a certain side of town, like you have to align yourself with them. That's interesting for a sixth grade kid. You're already uh, <laughs> right. making factors. That's absolutely right. <laughs> yes, you no, you the just p- want to go play with your... Your, your trucks in the sand or whatever, whatever kids are these You do not get to do that, right? You have to choose a side, which is based primarily on where you live. Yeah. So that kind of like randomness, the old, right? Where you're from statement. Where are you from? Yeah, where are you from? Well, I'm from like Crosstown. Well, like this whole town is small. Here? Yeah, what are you doing? Over? What are the stores over here? Right? <laughs> not a good answer, kid. So uh, that, that which happens to everybody, it's kind of coming of age story, which is like you join a certain like side they have like their own deep histories i know nothing about this i'm out of town but you, you still you had your to, right of passage right i've had my right <laughs> yeah from brooklyn like oh i guess you're like kind of like certified already right yeah. so whatever, whatever that means right you have your credentials right yeah. that's my, my linkedin profile <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> absolutely you can check my contacts in brooklyn age 10. Yes, it's age. <laughs> but that's still valuable running. it's like that kind of developed who you are <laughs> absolutely just the, uh, different market just different market well said and so just early on getting into trouble so thrown out of school various fights um running it's like petty like criminal enterprises which is what it amounts to right when you're 14 15 13 right you're not doing anything significant right um you're just engaging with the economy as it exists there and that's that's the environment i found myself in so that could come from without glorifying this but like stealing cars or like selling drugs or selling guns and trading various stolen arms any and everything you can think of right 
diversifying one's portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and hey, then, if the car wreck doesn't work out, that's okay. We got six other revenue streams. Right, and it's it's literally those concepts at least like governing my mind, right? Yeah. So, and then all the it's an interesting statement. So last year, um, one of my childhood friends who I lost track of, he lost all ambition. By the way, he didn't end up going to prison, but he had kind of like opted out of the uh, enterprise early. And so I reconnected with him, and he said, you know, when we were younger, you you were like, you had all the orphan kids, like, you were the central figure, right? So we had nowhere to go. We had no. My mom had like lost her mind, so I left home early, like thirteen. I just left, right? Ended up having a, a child at 15. So I was on my own, literally. And uh, everyone else who was on their own, they were with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's a pipe pipe <laughs> road up. <laughs> of the disenfranchised orphan children, who happens to be like an orphan child himself in, 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 in a kind of a sense. And, um, but leading them all, right, down the same path that I had been kind of set on early on in my life, which, which I'm deeply like, right? disturbed about right because a number of them weren't able to like rebound or recover from being placed in those environments we all eventually see each other in juvenile so that's where i end up first at a 15 inside of juvie get transferred to a maximum juvenile security prison right and what was the charges back then oh the charge was it was grand theft auto right not the video game the real thing (laughs) (laughs) gang assault um i think it was a there's like a, it was rob one no robbery one that was in there just just like a slew of charges right yeah. everything a healthy mix a, a, a healthy mix resume stacking right yeah, you're building your resumes this <laughs> right so i'm not like in a very like bizarre sense i mean that that's exactly what it is um so i found myself in juvie uh, i got a 237 because we were of course charged as adults right you guys are right the super predators of the world right yeah. or at least the future ones right in the eyes of the court right and we allow you to continue on this path, you will terrorize, right? Right, the state, right? Let alone your city. You'll terrorize the state given the opportunity. So they incarcerated us so all. I had maybe had like ten codes, co defendants. And uh, we all go to Juvie. And um and that is the beginning of my kind of introduction into the system. And you realize you get there and I met like childhood associates from Brooklyn when I was ten. We all ended up in the same place. All Interesting. Of us. All of us. So it's a pretty clear path. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember my uh, sixth grade teacher, this is in Albany, she told us, uh, all of you are going to jail. <laughs> I was like seven of us. Right. She said that at what, she what sa- age? We were, so we were like 12. Yeah. And she said, she well, saw it already. All of you are going to jail. She was absolutely right. So if that let, ended up dead? Um, Three. Okay. But two of them ended up getting like 25 to life. Absolutely. So she was right. She was right. And uh, that was one of the, she just didn't know that like. And every, that's the thing. Like when she can identify it at that age, like. How do you intervene? Right. No, that's true. That's true. And, I, and I'm still not sure, like, where... And that, that, that begs the question, like, how early do you have to intervene? Because it may be too late then, right? Yeah. You, you're already locked in a kind of, like, but, but way of thinking. But you show, like, you're resilient. Look at you now. So... Well said. So, you know, you can't really... Like, I think in, in Washington, good. they decide how many prisons to build at the fourth grade dropout rate. That's true. So instead of figuring out how to keep kids from dropping out of fourth grade, they just, you know, map out expenses for new prisons. Yeah. Prison, uh... School to prison pipeline, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like if you know that's coming, how do you intervene as a society? Right. No, I that's that, that's know. a fair. Un- unless they're the kind of disposable kind of citizenry. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Right. Do we don't even care about these kids? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. <laughs> and they have them in prison in the, in the labor market competing. Right. Right. Which I mean, speaking of speaking of the labor market, like, w- I think most people who go to prison like they're actually. Like release, right? Isn't like a high statistic? Yeah, ninety five percent all come home. Actually, return, right? And uh, they're competing. So everyone's coming home at right. some point. Right. And so, uh, yeah, no, that's that, that's that's a stellar point. So, yeah. So what? So what section of the labor market are they occupying? No, no, well said. Or they're just going back to prison. So you know, mo- 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 most mostly exactly. Yeah, right. Everyone goes back. Everyone goes back at, at at some point. At some point, you go back, or you're living in a virtual prison because your opportunities are limited, right? Yeah, I think it's sixty eight percent with the three years. I might be wrong in the last two, but I think it's like seventy five percent in five years, eighty three percent in seven or nine years. Yeah. So that's that's pretty high. Yeah, that's disturbing. Yeah, that life is- on the installment plan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well said. Well said. Disturbing, but like well said. Absolutely. But it was. And speaking of like interventions, so I remember going. Well, being in juvie, 
and like for the first time right although like you're living in like a hyper you say hyper masculine hyper violent environment where everyone's trying to prove themselves even further right it's like gladiator school before you eventually get to prison and eventually you graduate to the feds and then you make a name for yourself then you're like certified right you, you made out alive you, yeah. you, you've done nothing disgraceful you've maintained your honor right uh all, all these like values that are apparent or kind of evident like in the larger society right are also reflected uh within that subset of uh, american society as well often like o- over- overlooked but it's it's still there and um i remember like actually having you have a bed you have food right you have like it's like there's some stability like there. in prison like in prison like there's like there's some like stability side of life you hadn't seen before I, 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 absolutely. I mean, it's terrible <laughs> but you're like three hawks in a cot i say what and then you don't have to like fight for every i mean in prison it's a little different but in juvenile like, you don't have to fight for every you have to fight for your snacks but like <laughs> <laughs> like like the meals like they'll feed you okay yeah yeah they'll feed you okay right and they'll actually like, monitor like all right everyone's like going to eat well you just have to be tough but like it's it, it's much different when the food is there, right? Yeah. Like outside, you have to find a way to get the money to get the food. Mom's right? not bringing home food. Mom's not bringing home food, right? Like at least here, like there is a kitchen where there's food, yeah. right? And you got a food desert anyway, so you can't you can't go to QFC and go shoplift some bread. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not paying for it. You know, <laughs> you go hit the deli aisle and get some sandwiches. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so you and, and then like they actually have school, and yeah. then there's like school and like you go to school. Like there's not too many like fights in school right there are like a few of course like there's fights everywhere it's all unexpected but like there it's not as like right chaotic as like it's an interesting that like prison is a, a st- go for it yeah, like, <laughs> structured environment or like it's almost a better place absolutely it just shockingly yeah. shockingly and it was the first time i was like wow I we all know like, prison is terrible right so that's a that's an interesting it's a statement point right yeah, it's a statement thing. absolutely I'm thank like, god i got to <laughs> prison because things were cool i could eat i had a bed <laughs> right. you, you, you hear about that like you hear about people that are homeless who are like hey i'm just gonna go rob a bank because either i'm gonna get a lot of money or at least i'm not gonna be homeless <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely know? like being like being homeless right is di- being dispossessed in america right yeah. is actually worse than being in prison in, in some cases um, so it was there where actually had the chance to like refocus on like academics, right? Because I know so your brain's still working. My brain's still working, absolutely. I I I, I don't I don't do a, a bunch of drugs. I don't think I did like any drugs at at that point. It just wasn't a thing because so you lose like, clarity. That's like in the nineties rap music. You know, don't get high off your own supply. Absolutely. Well, nowadays it's different. But then it was like you definitely really don't want to do. Absolutely, they really they really didn't. If you did, you notice the downward trajectory of like he's the guy revenue. You didn't fuck with. Absolutely yeah. right. So uh, like Jimmy's messed up, man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's done. Bye from Frank. He's done <laughs> <laughs> right, so Who I'm, knows what's gonna happen to Jimmy? <laughs> right, you know his own volition, or like someone else is going yeah. to like take advantage of his like right. He's a walking victim. Absolutely, <laughs> walking victim. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the terminology used. <laughs> you know, you would know though. Yeah. You would know. Yeah, he's a walking victim, right? <laughs> so, uh, being a Julia, I, I no longer there was like there wasn't this intense like pressure to prove myself because I had already been like heavily involved i knew every i knew everybody everyone know that, like how, how, you know where you cut your teeth right absolutely so uh then i could just focus on academics because that that's really how i even got to where i was anyway and um taking the regents and scoring you know 97th percentile like to out like outperforming the actual school districts in that area thank god for grandpa thank god for grandpa he knew it yeah <laughs> he knew it, right? like, right? it's like junior's gonna have a tough time but he's gonna I'm going to prep him for this. <laughs> Absolutely, right? He said, but this time, you, you may have food, right? Just in yeah. case you don't have food, you'll still be able to function, right? So, uh, and, and that was the first time, like, in my in my mind, I was like, I could do this. I, I, I have to do this, right? And I'm, like, super good at it, Yeah, right? you could do this. Yeah, I could, I could do this, right? And um, that led me to get my GD at, like, 16, right? And then entering, like, college courses, right? Mind you, this is all within, like, a maximum security, like, juvenile prison, yeah. right? And still able to navigate that. Because, right, if you know all the tough kids you're already linked up with, them, you don't have to do anything at that yeah. point, right? You kind of just coast on, like, That's true. <laughs> yeah. reputation, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So a lot, lot of great cosigns along the way. Um, but I was focused on academics. And um, then it was my time to leave, right? So I did three years, early release, made my parole board. Right, things were looking. Well, I got denied the first time, but the second time around, made my parole board, and I was gonna return to society. And things were looking up. Everybody was, oh, he's the next hopeful, right? The great hope. Right? He made one mistake, but he's good now. Absolutely, <laughs> right? If anybody could do it, it's gotta be Jovi. Right after Juvie. And this is right after Juvie. Okay. Total 
failure. I return to the slum. Instead of going straight to college, I go back. As yeah, as you should have. As I should have, as planned. Like, and, and how did you how did you step off that that golden path? No, absolutely. But by just simply <laughs> booking a ticket to the city that I was from, and that was I wanted to go back and be an influence in my son's life, right, and reconnect with my family, and thinking like that is the upstanding, honorable thing to do. All the books I've read, right, fatherhood is important. It's huge family values, right. You're not Where realizing. <laughs> I think the Beast Boys talk about that. <laughs> they leave out this part. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately get thrown right back into the same the same thing. Because mind you, everybody's coming back at the same time, right? Yeah. And now they've consolidated. Because all your homeboys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody. And then like the new age of people who are coming up, right? Yeah. They're now involved. We all know more people, right? We've all been in like the juvenile. It's all the tough kids. Yeah, now you got the street cred. Right yeah. now, everybody's together. Now it's like dozens of us. Like your reunion. Absolutely. And what are we gonna do now? What are we going to do now? It was terrible. I, I failed to enroll in school. I ended up like not completing one of my last classes. I had to finish on the outside, so I got a D. Like that's in my transcript. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it must 3. hurt you. That you're talking about it now. Absolutely yeah, right. That's, it's un- like that's unusual. <laughs> right. right. A D, yeah, it? D for me. dehumanizing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Absolutely. So, so I failed to enroll. I ended up like getting a job, like a regular job at like the fast food, like like a, at the mall. Right? What's wrong with you? Yeah, wait, 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 <laughs> who does that? Who does that? It's not only hope for you. So you throw like an internship <laughs> at Goldman and Sachs. What are yeah. you doing? Right? And so th- that was that was the kind of path I found myself on, and was utterly depressed. Right? End up getting fired from that job for not telling on one of my coworkers, and um, and the, and the rest is kind of <laughs> the same trite wrote story uh, my uncles come home and they're all involved in all kinds of nefarious deeds and lo and behold i'm right back into the same this may have been like i was home for four months before i ruined everything really yeah absolutely it's a short window it, absolutely, absolutely the window right? so wasn't even a window busy. yeah it was yeah, yeah so it's kind of like like a dog door you know one of those yeah. things you kind of like crawl under right uh, or, or a mouse hole right into the mouse trap yeah right into the mouse trap and um i eventually go back to prison this time for home invasion facing like 20 years right and uh, i remember being at one of my final hearings and my, my lawyer who's court appointed he said i don't agree with mr anderson's kind of like a uh, steadfast right determination to fight this case right because you know things aren't like as clear cut and there's some things like i clearly didn't do but because yeah. of your reputation they're like you definitely did this right <laughs> you've been home four months you are a menace how'd you even get out yeah like how'd you get out here kidding. yeah who are you? absolutely so dealing with that so i took it to one of the final hearings and he said, I'm going to allow him to hang himself. He didn't say a word. He just sat in the court and literally refused to participate or defend me. And I knew then, like, if I continue with this, I am going to spend the rest of my life in prison. So I ended up, like, uh, uh, accepting a plea deal for seven years and five posts and the four that I owed from juvenile add on the back of it. So 11 and went right back into the system. And in that time, I was totally dejected, uh, hated life, right? Kind of let down, like, now every... walk off 11 years. Now I'm going to... Early twenties, right? Early twenties. I was nineteen. Time. I was yeah. nineteen. So I mean, all all this happening, I was like, it's 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 over, right? And I get a bunch of hate mail because everybody, when you enter the system, everyone knows like you're back in. Like, oh, you ruined everything. <laughs> Your son's gonna hate you. You've let us all down. Like, I mean, people who used to support me, like ostensibly, now were disappointed in me. It's like you only get one. You only get one chance, right? And so maybe I wasn't who I thought I was, and I went through this terrible. I wouldn't say like a state of depression, but everybody goes through it. Like you were not who like you say you are who you could have been so i kind of didn't live up to my potential and uh it took me a while to get like reacquainted with who i could be and that was largely because of my sister who would keep writing me letters like you're better than this i was like you don't know who i am like, <laughs> you, you were as fooled as i was like a few years ago that is Apparently, not cool. this might be who i am <laughs> absolutely right as much as i had as much as i try to argue against it <laughs> right clear if, if we're defined by our actions then uh, right clear, clearly this is yeah. this is me like a perpetual i didn't get framed i actually <laughs> did this shit. So, uh, her, but she was incessant. Like, I don't think she knew at that moment. Like, I was even more entrenched in that world, that kind of underground world. So, the gang world, the drug world. Like, I'm, I'm even more so in it now because I had all like the credentials. So now, since this is my fate, well, it's, it seems logical. I might as well use this to you get my a sharp ve- resume. <laughs> 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 my LinkedIn profile is robust at this moment, <laughs> right? So, uh, I, I, I a healthy network of friends. Absolutely, yeah. It was a uh, terrible, but that that, was, that those were my prospects, and I, and I felt well, maybe I should exercise them. And then fate kind of linked me up with like 
the kind of like icons or legends of that world and i end up getting employed by them like once again so so the same thing maybe it's a small world you get reference right and um uh, yeah found myself actively involved in uh, the the drug trade inside of prison quick fact i'd never sold heroin until going inside of prison so that, i mean that, that that's how strange america and, and the market's is the market's even greater in prison absolutely the market's Arbitrage. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it, it's it's so surreal in a, in, a, in a sense in a sense yeah so just being involved there and that momentum kind of carried me you rise in the ranks and then you meet your and heroes how did you kind of get involved in the the whole drug trade in prison what was that um so that was just by sheer fate happenstance luck randomness you know the stochastic nature of the universe <laughs> right <laughs> landed me with like because you have to share a cell right so you share this cage with another like gentleman who's <laughs> upstanding of course <laughs> very <laughs> This fine fellow. Absolutely. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And um, I ended up getting linked with uh, one of the uh, like prominent like gang lords of like, New York City. The so, biggest. So he's not just running a block. No, he's he's running the entire like city. Really? Like New York, like Gotham City, New York City. He runs the he's whole. He's like the top guy. He's, 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 he's like, a, yeah. He's sharing a bunk with you. Absolutely. And I'm like 20 years old. And what did he get pinched for? He got uh, murder, various murders okay. and uh, drug-related offenses. They gave him 25 to life. Um, and he's still now he's just running stuff on the inside. Absolutely, right. And he's got all the connections. Absolutely. So all like the rappers, the basketball players, right? The sports and entertainment world, like the males coming in, they're all like. So if he if he's head of Gotham, he's like the man. Exactly. Exactly. And now right. he's, he's your new mentor. Right. Exactly. Right. Or like I guess you're his protege. Right. Okay, right. Absolutely. <laughs> like <that. laughs> protege. Right. That's actually a good title. Right. That's, that's a good title right there. Entrepreneur slash. Entrepreneur slash protege. And so I eventually like work for him just naturally, uh, share the same space, and uh, he eventually gets set up for this riot that happens in Five Points because uh, the guards had did something to one of right the members of his organization. There was a strong, violent reaction. You know, canisters, shots get fired in the yard, locked down, weeks with no food, no water, harassment, searches, the usual assaults, prison lockdown, the usual right. prison lockdown situation. Yeah. He gets set up with, like, a knife. They feel he has something to do with it. Feel, right, this, I think we had, like, a, we, we had a pretty, like, long run, like, given, right, how high up this guy was, like, heavy yeah. scrutiny. Um, it was almost impossible to live a normal, like, prison life being associated with this because you have to kind of run the organization and how'd you kind of like internalize that because you're kind of running drugs on the outside now you get to see what the ultimate the, the penultimate success of a drug kingpin looks like and he's sharing the bunk with you next door absolutely and, and one would think i would become like i guess thoroughly corrupted or whatever kind of like bad uh i don't, I don't want to say bad whatever like corrupt elements were that i had picked up along the way they were metastasized throughout like the entirety of my being like after encountering him right right because this is as i just said kind of pinnacle of success in, in in that world but that wasn't the case though right so he was always amazed he said how'd you make it through juvenile without becoming like and like becoming a, an active member of the game right because i would always just run my own show yeah right <laughs> and like Actually, you have to collaborate, right? So you have to kind of, like, network, but never become entrenched in the kind of, like, politics. You want to be removed to a degree so you can have more room to, like, navigate, right? And uh, he was just amazed by, like, how would you do that, right? And so even, like, him, I never joined, like, his organization, like, like officially, right? As, like, a member, like, an underling. Yeah. But, like, as just, like, a strategic partnership at 20 years old, right? And uh, he never tried to compel me to, like, oh, we have to be, right? Involved, all, you he's know. not trying to jump you in right yeah. exactly because he was like this isn't even going to work for you like, yeah. like you're, you're a different kind of like character right but uh and, and so seeing that like he also had a number of like life lessons because this guy's like incredibly smart too uh, in order to like i guess rise in the ranks in the, in the way that he did you have to be cerebral to an extent you have to be strategic you have to be right kind of savvy right and intelligent he, he was all those things like a connoisseur of books, right? Nice. Besides jewelry, money, and guns, I like book books too, though. <laughs> right? The Forty Eight Laws of Power. Forty Eight Laws of Power. Yeah, exactly. Right. The Art of War. Yeah. Right. Machiavelli. Right? <laughs> Hobbes. Right. All, all, all of that stuff. Weber. And so, uh, introducing me to like this literature as well, and um, so that uh, some really interesting characters right. introducing you to books. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and and that set me apart from my peers. And he would always say, "This is it's going to end in destruction, but you have a chance to like." get out of here really and that, that was that was this whole thing although like you're gonna you're gonna after work all, for me after but, all this is the guy that's gonna help you pivot right this is the guy who's going to help me pivot no yeah way. swear swear and was, so there's a number of, like stories um 
he would say, there was another gym I worked for, a uh, PI, and he would say, I've been rich seven times. Right? This is the first time I ever heard this. Like, I've been rich seven times. He was like, it never works out. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, they were making a bunch of money now? This never works. They get hit, I'll go back in. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm rich for a second. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, we're it, not talking Bill Gates rich. Right. We're talking block rich. Exa- exactly. Oh, he, ex- <laughs> right. And they would convey the message to me, this life is terrible. Right? This life is, even, like, ostensibly, it seems like I have this like iconic status i'm a celebrity where i go i enter this like prison realm and i'm like a godfather and on the outside i have massive influence and control but my ceiling is here my 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 sphere of influence is like very small relative to the rest of the world there's a larger world out there right and and my wife just robbed me for three hundred and fifty thousand. and everything's like that and like like, that almost sounds like a first world problem but not not really <laughs> so it are things like that and they're realizing I have to get out of this. Yeah. But I am in trenches because I'm like we're like collaborate. Like I and work and for and you. And right? how do you step outside of it? Right. Well I was like physically removed. So it was a yeah. sting operation and then everyone goes to like the box, everyone gets like new charges. I escaped the new charge. So I just go to solitary confinement and it was there that I realized I'm either going to die. I'm going to kill somebody. Someone's going to kill me, right? One of my friends is going to kill me, right? There's well, only I'm, a few paths from this point. There's only a few paths because I'm already too far advanced in this world, right? So you can't... It's, it's like the point of no return. Yeah, and that's the culture too. Absolutely. And so in there, I, really, I, I determined, I don't know how I'm going to get out of here and turn around, but I'm done. And I'm tough enough to quit on my own merit, right? Right? Because I still, I haven't done anything dishonorable. So I can still, le- as long as the people I'm associated with do nothing dishonorable, yeah. <laughs> I think I can survive. They're not too mad at you. Right, they're not, they're not too mad at me. <laughs> like you haven't ripped them off enough. They're not hunting for you. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, we could have made a few million, man. He quit early, right? Yeah. Something like that. Nah. Right? <laughs> this is like those mob movies, you know, blood and, you know. Oh, no. no. There's no out. <laughs> no, there's no out. They pull me back in. <laughs> yeah, no. hey, and, and also because there's this sense that what if one of us can make it out of here. So you have a little bit of support that way. Right, right, absolutely, right? Funny you're, is you're coming... like f- the hopeful. You're right. like the great, the great black hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once again, but not from the kind of like staff or counselors or teachers who will come from initially, but from the rejected. From gangland. From, 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 from the yeah. gang lords, yeah, who's like, I think you could pull it off. No right? way. Absolutely. As audacious as it sounds, <laughs> you might be the one. Right? So I landed all so the world. So clearly they were wrong because you, you, you didn't make anything of yourself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe this way. We invested all this money in you. We didn't kill you and you did nothing. <laughs> You're working at Target? You're working at Target? Or Target? <laughs> <laughs> Not even French. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember getting out of solitary confinement and uh, the officer telling me, you're going to the jungle, which is Auburn's infamous name. I said, wow, this is, uh, this is probably going to be bad. But I've been, I've been in worse situations. I lived in the projects. Yeah, you can do this. Shackle me up, yeah. right? So I land there, and then I hear these rumors that there's this prison education program sponsored by Cornell University. So I was like, Cornell? Cornell? What? Isn't that one of those Ivy League? Isn't that one of those <laughs> Ivy League schools, right? What would they be doing here amongst, like, us, right? Yeah. The kind of despised segment of society, right? Why would they be here? It's got to be a ruse. So I investigate, lo and yeah, behold. Wing nut is running that yeah, way. absolutely, <laughs> right? And find out there's, like, legitimate professors. Professor Emeritus, like, English. There's neuroscientists. There's statisticians, political scientists. Everyone's there full scale operation i take the test i was like this is how i'm going to you know redeem right <laughs> right right my, my aspiration like, I, know I know how to do this i'm i'm, I'm good at this <laughs> and ended up getting in the program I, I was much younger then much much more of a rock star then um 21 i think i answered maybe 20 or 21 and um never looked back broke every single record so youngest to graduate you know they love the like he's like the first like black valedictorian and he's like the youngest one and he has the highest gpa ever in program history right and like he might actually go to like college on the outside it's a thing right well, uh, like how far did that program get you in that program like, i end up getting an associate's degree because okay. uh, they had a partnership with another community college right so you don't get the actual cornell degree but you get taught by the instructor so oh, you get okay. the, so they partner with some they partner with some third tier university yeah. or college or, like in general <laughs> studies or some some like even when they have bring in great instructors and it's like what you actually get is the, 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 certificate yeah certificate from the college prison program it's like, i just want a, a, 
Yeah. <laughs> I just want to it's like, education. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for that, but. Where am I going to take that motherfucker? <laughs> no, man. That's exactly I'm going to show you my certificate. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. like, what? Right, it's like a food handling yeah. license. I, I think right? a couple of these might be as the election credits. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I remember, and, and even it's a good start. Look, yeah, you know. right. But I think people see that, and like for them, if you don't have the like the entrepreneur's mindset, you say, "Well, this is this is all I can do with this." This is cute, right? But if you, <laughs> if, if, if if you see it from a different angle, I, I think I can leverage this 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 whole thing. One to get out of here. Two to escape my environment. Three to like transcend my circumstances entirely. And like four to set up the next generation, right? For like me and people that I don't even know yet, right? You can still throw the name Cornell around. Right, yeah. right, absolutely, right? Cornell trained. Cornell, Cornell trained. Uh, third year, right? Third year. <laughs> Whatever. Absolutely. Uh, right. You can get a letter from that uh, prefer- professor. That's, absolutely. Which is what happened. No, this is exactly what happened. Oh. Right? No, absolutely. Right? See, we were like from, yeah, we from the know. same cloth. Absolutely, yeah. right? We must have shared some life experiences. It was I, some I believe similarity. that's probably true. <laughs> Right, so uh, I eventually um, run into this lady, Benet Rubenstein. Well, actually, she gets called in. Like, you have to meet this kid, Jody. He's like, there's like this kid genius here. Like, he's young, right? And he's black, and he's not like brainwashed by like his like culture, yeah. right? I think there's some potential here, right? She comes in, and uh, immediately says, if if what they're saying is true, I'm gonna get you in a Harvard or yeah. I was like, what? Like, I just want to get out of prison alive, <laughs> right? Because I know at some point someone's going to kill me. Like, oh, this guy, I remember this guy, right? Is this guy like, I love your grand ambition. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do small, small things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's try to get me out of here, like, yeah. first. First right? things first. First things first. And lo and behold, like, she gets me out of prison, like, four years early. How? She she writes, like, letters to, like, the board of parole. Because, mind you, there's no... They have parole in New York, and you can you have a relief valve of sorts. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's very early on in, in my sentence. And, mind you, I had that, right, extensive record. Yeah. Right? And then even being inside, I was doing a number of, like, yeah, you're illicit picking, activity. You're picking up, <laughs> were you picking up felonies or just infractions? No, just infractions. Look, I avoided the felony aspect. The prosecutor a lot of, wasn't picking them up. A lot, of, a lot of time in the law library amongst the scholars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to collaborate with them, too. Yeah. Right? They have to leave. They're not at Stanford Law, but they are, they're, they're legal scholars nonetheless. They are. Seriously. They've been there for 20 years. Right. Yeah. right absolutely. Like, they know everything. Like, here's the situation. We don't want it to go to the courts. <laughs> yeah, very sad. You just go ahead and take my TV <laughs> for 30 days or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> you need your commissary. Absolutely. Take the commissary. You're not, you're not buying with your own money. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it, man. Absolutely. So, man, it's so evade the kind of, like, uh, actual, like, courtroom situation where you get charged in extended time. So, a lot of letters from, like, Cornell faculty and professors, like, on my behalf. And mind you, Benet Rubenstein arranges this entire thing. Her and uh, Dr. Weatherby. This whole charade. This whole charade. When people <laughs> can't be like, why would you be doing this? Because this guy's, like, a wild card, right? Um, and her in collaboration with Dr. Weatherby, who started the program, like, decades ago. And um, I eventually secure release. And I'm telling... So, then you have to go through this, like, decontamination phase inside. They give you, like, cognitive training. Okay. Like the pre-release. <laughs> the pre-release pathway. stuff. And they're like, so what's your plan, right? Because you don't have one. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to go to Ithaca. I'm going to attend Cornell University. And then I'm going to apply to transfer into the school, right? I have a job lined up, a supportive community. They're like, no, you don't. Where's the <laughs> proof? I'm like, well, there's, like, Come dozens of people who are, like, they wrote letters. Like, I didn't write these letters. That's not my signature. Like, That's their plan. <laughs> that's their plan, yeah. They jumped me in. Yeah, they jumped me in, right? <laughs> I'm not going to resist. It's, it's, right, it right. seems better than the project. It's, it's the intelligentsia. They, they've somehow recruited me. They're like, no, you're going back to Schenectady. That's where you're going. I was like, why? I have nothing there. You're going back there. That makes zero sense. But of course, they they deny my uh, transfer to Ithaca to go to Cornell and send me to a homeless shelter side of Schenectady. So, Cornell on one side, <laughs> the powers that be say homeless shelter. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what that's what they I'm said. Trying to track that, yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's exactly because what they they're said. in charge. Because they're in charge, yeah. right? And it was in. Are they? Tr- you think they're trying to? Just sink your aspirations? Or? Oh, I have, I have no idea. I, I think I think I would be effective at doing that myself. Yeah. I mean, you don't need any help, right? Yeah, you've got a history of one. Absolutely, right? How did you, right. How did you figure out? Right. So uh, they were uh, they were adamant on sending me there, and they succeeded. I remember going to parole every other day, sitting there, like, well, I'm just waiting to go through the process of getting to Ithaca because you know that's where I should be. Right? I have a job. Just yeah. reiterating their own talking points. This is the programs that you guys implement so that people can get on the right path. I have those set up. The supportive community, right? The academic environment. Employment, right? 
supportive structure, a healthy city, devoid of crime. Why wouldn't you send me there? Right? <laughs> so I had to keep reiterating this. And, and B'nai Rubicine, once again, through this political maneuvering, gets me transferred to Ithaca. And I, I become, at first, because I, I missed the beginning of the semester, I missed all the deadlines, of course. Yeah. So there I'm just, I'm just an auditor. Um, at first, you just audit the classes. Just auditing classes. So English, labor law, Chinese. Just I would just show up at a professor's door. I sat in front of my Chinese instructor's door. Just sat there, and uh, she came out, and I was like, "Hey, I'm, I'm here." So I introduced in Spanish. So like, "What's she on? What's y'all on, Jody?" And she was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why y'all shot need to cut?" And she was like, "Oh my God!" So like, "Where are you from?" Right? So we go back and forth, and I was like, "Well, I'm on parole, and like, I can't make it to class at 3:30. But if you have a later class, I could come." She said, like, "You show up today, you're in." You got some human capital. Absolutely. Ab- way absolutely. That's how, yeah. It's there it is. for somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah, right. so you know where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all I have to do is talk my way to this class. Absolutely. And then, of course, she's like, well, how do you find, well, like, Eli Friedman, right? He's, right, one of the labor instructors, right? And he knows I have an interest in, like, Chinese, and the Chinese, China is, like, huge, right? Heavy influence at Cornell. So it was a, it, it was a shoe in So I remember going through that, volunteering, um, at like local organizations, serving on like the board for like criminal justice, um, tutoring students who are trying to avoid incarceration and go on to like school. So as an alternative to incarceration, doing that, giving speeches, giving talks, collaborating with the mayor. Like it was, it was like an incredible experience. Uh, teaching debate at, at at Cornell. My my debate coach Sam Nelson hugely influential in uh my ability to navigate academia it actually brings me to the director of admissions at Cornell. Interesting. It was like, well, that's how the world works. So, so <laughs> he's like, you're comfortable talking to the head gang kingpin of New York. Is that like a similar conversation to like, the, the other people running organizations? And absolutely. You know, I had made that same parallel early on. Like, the people running the underworld, right? They have to share similar characteristics with the people running, like the world or at least certain cities like so these people run the city or run the university those skills or that like mindset right the paradigm that they're using to successfully do that has to be similar so that that's how I, that's how i moved forward just w- with that in mind and, and it proved to be largely uh, successful um and then i decided i would have to go for the gusto right so i had uh, defected from cornell and decided i would take my talents out west to uh, the lovely palace of Stanford University. The farm. Wow. So what made you pick Stanford? Ah, uh, there. Fear, fear the tree? <laughs> <laughs> fear the tree. So if you don't join the tree, you will be uh, <laughs> ravaged by the tree. No, it was a, th- there was a part of me that wanted to um, prove myself a- in a place where I didn't have a ton of support. So at Cornell, I knew everybody, right? Literally, right? It was kind of homegrown. You know, yeah. Hometown kid, in a sense, because of my affiliation with them inside. And I just felt it wouldn't reflect, right, my true ability Cause I knew, like, you want to no, do this on your own, right? No one would let me fail at court now, right? This just wasn't going to happen, right? So I knew if I went somewhere else, kind of looking at you like, hey, here's this uh, this charity case from prison. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna make sure uh, we're gonna give us some extra. You don't have to take the test, exactly. Right? So that was even part of it. Like, oh, you don't have to take like the ACT or the SAT. No, 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 it, you're, you're it's good. all right. You're, you're good. We have we're a just, special program. We have a special you. program. I say like, no. I want to take every test. I, I, I want to score in like the top percentile. Like I, I'm going to do that, I right? Don't want my, my graduate. My, I don't want my degree to <laughs> <from> an asterisk. <laughs> right. Graduate from Cornell through this through, one program. Exactly. Right. Program. Absolutely. So if you looked at, I, and I just feel like there was added scrutiny on me. This could be like a fancy in my imagination, but uh, at least I was thinking towards the future and other people who would be similarly situated. Right? Is there a way that they could? break into or like not not break into that, <laughs> that sounds that sounds <laughs> awfully criminal right you say like cross over right into like a different social milieu right on their own right with their own talents right right and actually be successful in doing that right without being this kind of like tokenized right representative yeah. of Right. And how did you compete with everyone else here? Did you just like apply like everyone else? I applied like everyone else so through like the transfer application because I had had yeah, the I actually heard the transfers are, are more stringent than regular students. Absolutely. They call them the unicorns. So oh. so so the normal acceptance rate here is below 4%. It's so low they don't publish it anymore. 
for the, the transfers? No, for the regular student body. Oh, it's under four percent. It's under four percent. So I say, oh, we don't want to seem elitist like Harvard or Yale oh, or anything. I thought that they would want it. I didn't know that. Right. Well, that, I mean, so if you don't publish it, it's like, well, it must be super low. So it's very clever. Yeah. yeah I remember <laughs> last time I looked, it was around five percent. But that's you know maybe ten years ago. Right. But it's it's under that now. But the transfer is under one percent. Yeah, I heard somebody else I talked to. I think out of three thousand transfer applicants, twenty four got in. Right. I don't know what your pool is like. Right. My pool is similar. Yeah, they they very yeah, similar. Definitely below one percent. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, a couple of zeros. In front of <laughs> a couple of zeros. Yep. So so I figured, well, if I'm going to, if I truly am who I believe I am, right? And how self validating is that? Um, to unicorn your way in like to that. unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> to, like that. <laughs> right. No, it's definitely like a kind of like I, I would say proof of what my sister had believed because I'm now operating off of this momentum that has somehow been built around me, right? That wasn't there at first when I was in, ju- uh, in, in the juvenile prison. And maybe partially because I hadn't reached the kind of, like, mental maturity or even, like, social maturity because I hadn't run into uh, these influential people or people who, right, had, like, connections to various resources and they existed outside of my, like, uh, social group entirely, right? I never encountered these people in my life. Right. So finally getting a chance to do that. And that may have upped the stakes. And I just felt that I have to do something as right grand as my potential. To make up for all that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> some, some countervailing <laughs> equities. <laughs> <laughs> we got all this stuff stacked over here. Right. Which shows how great I am in that arena. <laughs> yeah. I need something like now it has to be better. On Abs- absolutely. So doing so that. One thing could be a fluke or like, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and and somehow they uh so the dean calls me personally like oh, stanford right so, so really? I, I get accepted the last day of class at cornell right um and this is the first time i've ever seen the students happy at cornell because normally they're, they're <laughs> under the impression that they are like the worst of the best out of that ivy league aura oh, so like, like a weird drug drug yeah yeah right <laughs> a weird vibe there's a weird morale <laughs> the beating will continue until morale improves <laughs> absolutely <right. laughs> So, so at the last day, that was removed. Like, they somehow didn't feel like that, right? There wasn't this, like, we are not as elite as we kind of, like, you know, would, would would like to be, or right? Even though it's only in their minds, but that was that was gone. They were happy, right? And I had, at this point, I had been rejected by Columbia, right? I had been rejected by Harvard, right? And I had been rejected by Princeton, which had opened their transfer pool for the first time in 20 years. So I felt like a true underdog, right? But those weren't the schools I, I was I was aiming for. Those are your safety schools. Right, those are my safety schools. <laughs> <laughs> and I told my professor, that, That's like, cute. <laughs> like, what are your safety schools? I was like, uh, Harvard, Yale, <laughs> Princeton, Columbia. They were like, no, no, serious. I'm like, no, no, no I'm I'm serious. Right? There, there, there's no there's no failing or turning back from it. Right. So uh, I only have so much money for application fees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not applying to. <laughs> I'm not applying to SUNY. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta buy lunch for that fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> fifty bucks gonna go a long way. I'm not, I'm not put it here. Yeah. So uh, it, it was the last day of classes, and um, I remember my uh, professor taking me out to eat at like this Chinese restaurant. I was like, hey, order some food in Chinese. They just love to see this, right? The, the shock on like the, the waitress's like faces when I start going in into the spiel. Oh. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely lovely every time, and um, it, it, it ends. She, she drives me home, and uh. I checked the email. Says you have a notification from Stanford. I'm like, yes. I'm sitting on the balcony. It's me and my girlfriend from Cleveland. This is email, so it's not the fat envelope. Absolutely so right. You just yeah. missed it, right? right? But somehow you still get the physiological kind of like reaction. Like, just oh, to say in the subject line. <laughs> yeah. you, you gotta click. You gotta click first. Admission update. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. I was so tempted to give it to my girlfriend at the time. It was the only girl I ever Baby, loved at Cornell. Can you read this for me? And uh, then I decided, no, no, no. This is this is a moment of fate. I've I've prepared my whole life for this. My grandfather has brutalized me <laughs> to accept this moment. <laughs> Do this for grandpa. Do this for grandpa, right? Which on his on his deathbed, quick anecdote. He didn't say I love you, Jr. Like I wish you the best. I know you'll get into Stanford. I know you'll go on to crush the students at Harvard one day, right? I know you'll be the first black president, right? He didn't know Barack Obama was being created already. Yeah. He had no idea, right? But he was very you know prescient in his, in his uh, take on life. He told me to do my multiplication charts on his deathbed. No kidding. One through twelve. Good for him. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? After I did that, I walked out the room like I, I can't believe that this is like what the sky That's has. That's your parting like. word. First, he dies after that. New Mexico. He dies after that. So and now here I am opening this like 
application. Like, with that kind of providing the context, right? And uh, the first line I read maybe is like, congratulations. I flip. I toss a computer. I almost fall off the balcony, right? I almost <laughs> throw my what girlfriend off the roof. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? After all <laughs> yeah. of that. <laughs> like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. you gotta get, see, just not, 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 yet. Yet. Yeah, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. And I'm just in a state of like hysteria. I call my sister and she's like, I knew it. I told you they were going to regret it. And so it's like a validation like for her. But then, then in my mind, I'm like, Oh man, I have to plan like. No, Are they asking like, is there a different Stanford we haven't heard about? It's like a Stanford in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, so was it like Stanford, like yes, Connecticut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Are we talking about the same place? And, the uh, Stanford school. Yeah, yeah right. No, no, no. It's another prison education program or something. It's like, no, this is a legitimate Stanford, which is why the dean calls the next day. He calls my sister because my phone. I lose all coherence. I don't. Yeah. I don't pay my phone bill that day. Once I get the results, I'm like. It's over. It like, doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I'm in, right? So my phone goes off, right? Everything. The dean calls my sister to contact my girlfriend, to contact me, right? That it is real. You've been accepted into Stanford. The Just Stanford. You you, know. Absolutely. This is not spam. You're in, kid. And I'm your advisor. Make sure that email didn't get to you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the dean is your advisor? And the dean is my advisor. Well, holy shit. <laughs> How'd that feel? I, I mean, totally serious. I'm seeing that convocation, right? Mind you, we had to go through this phase to get me transferred from New York to California because this is huge. Like, Yo, are you still on pro- parole at this point? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And for how long does that run? That for, runs for eight years. It's still going then. Right, yeah. and it's still going. But I'm up for early release uh, upon graduation. <laughs> 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 I was like, that was like, that <laughs> no matter how is, great is you think you are. Is it hard to like, deal with that? So, like, this, this, this small stuff. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, it was, let, let me send you a cute little letter. <laughs> but it's serious for them. Absolutely. They're just waiting for you to fuck up. All day. So it was so strange being on parole in Ithaca. I would tell the parole officer, I have a test at 8.30 at night, right? He's like, come I, on now. He's like, come on. No, your curfew is at 8. I was like, sir, like, I have a test. No. I was like, well, well, well I'm going to take the test, right? Yeah, you, uh, can, yeah. you can technically violate. <laughs> yeah, you yeah I'm saying, if th- this is what you're going to do. Well, I, I'm going to do I'll take the test. I'll finish quick, right? And I'll run back before 8. So uh, th- those are the kind of, like, conditions I was under. He didn't believe you could be in the library at one in the morning. Because <laughs> yeah, he's never been to the library. Because he's never, exactly, never been to the library. You can hear anywhere. Like, people yeah. are falling asleep in the library, yeah. right? And waking up, like, oh, I got to finish the piece set. I Even asleep. at junior colleges. <laughs> right, bro, exactly. <laughs> like, not an elite, yeah, right, absolutely. Right, any college in America, this phenomenon is occurring. So, I mean, that, that is clearly, like, an impediment. But I, I circumnavigated that as well. Well, yeah. awesome. No. Nope. What the fuck? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're here, what's next for you? Uh, next is... Can you do this political stuff? I know. Uh, well, well, hopefully it, that will bring my talents to Washington. There was a part of me that wanted to co-term. So you want to change laws or you want to make Grandpa Pratt and be president? I definitely want <laughs> So, so who's, who's that young lady who's running for, for an office who was formerly incarcerated? Oh, that was Sarah Gadd. And she's in uh, Chicago. And she's is, running for Congress. That is incredible. If, I mean, if I could follow in her like, I'll connect footsteps, you to. I mean, that, 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 that would be incredible because she's definitely a uh, you know, trailblazer for even doing that. I mean, now that's like in my mind, that's actually a possibility. Yeah, she has an amazing story too right. because she was uh, at a really great uh, medical school. Right. I think she's pursuing, you know, that stuff. Um, <laughs> and she got in a car accident, got addicted oh, to no. opioids. Right. And then it all went bad. Right. She ended up in prison. Um, and then it's like some specific drug got her off the opioids. Nice. And then once she got out, then she's like started a nonprofit to bring that same drug in to help other people. Now she's at Chicago Law, which is pretty darn good school. Oh, absolutely. For Congress. <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. Right. Um, That's huge. Well, well, my aspirations aren't aren't that lofty. And I, I say lofty like for, for, in my own like circumstances, but for her, this is very attainable. So she's super ambitious. So I, I, I don't know if my political science trajectory <laughs> will, will take me. So we're going to have to catch up with you soon. Absolutely. See what happens next. Absolutely. Well, graduation is right around the corner. So, so yeah. I'll definitely be the cap and gown. When? When? Finally. I think it's in June. May is June. It's 2020. The well, last year on Earth. <laughs> yeah. oh, why not? I just need a reason. <laughs> you have my personal invite again to, to the farm. All Beautiful right. palm trees everywhere. Farm? Why do they call it the farm? Uh, the I think it was street. literally... It was a farm. farm. I think it was literally a farm, and they're still keeping that kind of culture alive. Although, I mean, you look around, no farm on earth looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's immaculate farm. It looks like a golf course, right? Or a resort. Jody Anderson from Stanford. Yeah. The volleyball game's over, but it's great talking to you. Same here, man. See you next time. All right. <laughs>